Um, I want to talk to you guys about the formulas for um, the areas of triangles, parallelograms, and trapezoids today. Um, you, I'm sure you guys have used them before. I mean, probably in grade school or middle school at some point, you've done these formulas before. But what I found uh, in my years of teaching is that uh, you know, a lot of people who have, you know, you're, you're doing because you've been told to do, um, and that's all well and good, but we don't want to be so mechanical about things. We want to really understand them. So I just want to go over where these formulas came from today. Um, and then you guys can go ahead and you can use them to solve some of the problems I left you guys. Um, so again, the problems themselves should just be a review, but it's important that we know kind of where these come from. So the first thing you guys definitely should understand is that to find the area, okay, to find the area of a rectangle that is the base times the height. Now, for a rectangle, remember, we said it's two dimensions, right? It could be the length times the width if we wanted to, right? But here, we use base and height um, for specific reasons. Um, and that is because this is a base and this is a height. If you notice that there is a perpendicular distance here, we learned that about rectangles. So this is a base and this is a height. But um, we could call them length and width because it is also length and width, okay? But very specifically, we need to understand this. Your base and your height have to go ahead and make a right angle between them. Okay, so that's really important for us. Okay, so the area of a rectangle, so the area of a rectangle is equal to the base times the height, which is BH. Okay, all right, so let's talk about triangles. Now, most of you guys would know that the area of a triangle, hopefully, the area of a triangle, so let's say area and a bull triangle, area of a triangle, is one half the base times the height. Uh, and the reason for this, and I'm going to put up a couple different triangles here. I'll put up a, an equilateral one. I will put up a right one. I will put up an isosceles one. Uh, and I'll draw an obtuse one too. Why not? Just for the heck of it. Or I won't. <laughs> um, I'm going to triangle with lines and not line segments. Okay. So why is it half the base times the height? Well, we'll start with the right triangle here. If we notice, in this case, our base and our height, again, since it's a right triangle, this is our base and this is our height. Um, but the base times the height, right, it wouldn't be enough. That would tell us actually this shape here, right, if we did the base times the height. But if you notice, what happened is by making it a right triangle, what we've done is we've kind of cut this square right here in half. So what do we do? We had the base times the height, but we don't want the whole thing. We only want the triangle part, this part right here, okay? And it can be something like this for a right triangle, but no matter what, you know, if we kind of take this and we turn all of these into rectangles, right? Well, again, what do we have now? I've got the base times the height, right? But if we notice, if I kind of like folded this part in here and folded this part in here, they would fit very nicely inside this triangle. But essentially, the rectangle that I've drawn around it is two of these triangles, right? If I kind of took this part and this part, cut them out and glued them together over here, I'd have two of the same triangles, right? And no matter what you do with a triangle, you can always do that, right? I can draw a rectangle around it. All right, a little bit trickier with an obtuse triangle, but really no big deal. Here, hold on a second. Sorry, I misdrew this one. Um, again, a little bit trickier here with a, a right triangle, but what if I kind of flip this around and I gave you a little rectangle going this way? Again, my height would be 
in here. And again, I have these two parts match and these two parts match, right? So again, it is still the area of a rectangle. What do we do though? We just kind of cut it in half in all cases, right? Sometimes we got to break into a few more parts, but it is just broken in half. Um, nope, not yours. Um, parallelograms, very kind of similar concept that if we went ahead and took a parallelogram, which are there, again, what do we have to do? It's pretty straightforward. It, this is, here's your base, right? Here's your base and your height would be somewhere like this, right? This would be 90 degree angles, right? That would be your height. But again, what happens if we cut this part off, right? And we kind of just supplanted it over here. Well, those two lines are the same length, right? So again, just think about it. The hypotenuse leg theorem, like your height is out here, right? This is the hypotenuse, right? We know it's the same length because opposite sides of a parallelogram are the same length. But again, we have a very easy one for parallelograms. The area of a parallelogram, it's a terrible little parallelogram, uh, is very easily just going to be the base times the height, okay? Um, just make sure you're not doing the diagonal distance that your height is straight up and down. Um, because of this, what we're going to have to do a, a quite a lot as we get through this is we're going to have to figure out they're going to give you this distance and this distance, and we'll have to find out the height using the Pythagorean theorem or something. Okay. And the last one is a trapezoid. And the area of a trapezoid is a little bit tricky. Um, I will tell you guys what it is. Um, there's a few different ways to write it. Um, I'll put them up here. You can write the area of a trapezoid as being, uh, you could say, one half uh, base one plus base two uh, times the height. Right? It could be something like that. Um, we sometimes say it's uh, base one plus base two times the height divided by two, same thing, right? And sometimes you might say something like the height times uh, base one plus base two um, all over two. So these are all essentially the same thing. Um, you can write out what you want. This one, uh, obviously, a little bit trickier to kind of put together. Um, you can use whichever one of those formulas you feel comfortable with. You can look them up and figure out which one works best for you. Um, for this one, let's go ahead and look. we're going to call this, we're going to say this is, a, we'll call this one base one up here. And this one's going to be base two down here. Well, let's go ahead and let's try and figure this out. I'm going to draw the height here and here. Okay, well, what if I took this triangle right here and I merged it together with this triangle? And I got something like, you know, here's the one on the left, right? And here's the one on the right. Like, if I cut this part out and I cut this part out and I glued them together. Well, the height we know, uh, well, how long would this base be? Well, this whole base is B2, right? But if I cut off this part, and this part, right? Well, wouldn't that just be B2 minus B1, right? This segment in the middle now is B1, right? From here to here. Well, if I took B2 and I took away B1, the base of this triangle would be what? It would be B2 minus B1. So I know the area of this triangle would be one half the base, which is B2 minus B1 times the height, okay? And what about this rectangle right here? Well, that's that's easier, right? The rectangle in the middle would just be the base times the height, right? So it'll be B1 times the height. Well, let's put it all together. Well, therefore, we would say that the area of the trapezoid would equal uh, the, the triangle part, one-half B2 minus B1 times the height plus 
B1 times the height. So really fancy. Now, just some little housekeeping parts of this. Okay, I'll start by factoring out that H, right? There's a plus sign, so I'm going to factor out an H. So let's say area is equal to H. And now what's left? One half of B1, B2 minus B1 plus B1. Okay, let's distribute the one half. Area is equal to height times one half A2 minus one half B1 plus B1. Okay, if it's not giving you a headache yet, then that means it's not working. Okay, if I want to add these all together, I need a common denominator. This is one over two, one over two, and this is one B that's going to be two over two. My area is equal to height. One half of B2 minus one half of B1 plus two over two, right? It's one B. Okay, and now what can I say? I can say that uh, one half plus two, what's negative one half plus two halves? Well, that would be positive one half, right? So then wouldn't my area equal the height? One half of B2 plus one half of B1, and all of a sudden it should start to come together, okay? What is this? I'm going to factor out a one half. The area is equal to one half B1 plus B2 times the height, okay? So listen, I, I know you guys can just go ahead and do it. I, I'm well aware of that. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a rough idea of where some of these things came from, okay? So have at it, and I will talk to you guys later.